Hello, Culture Matters Podcast. Boy, do I have a treat for you today. Before I introduce you to our guest, here is a quote. Don't underestimate the power of vision and direction. These are irresistible forces able to transform what might appear to be unconquerable obstacles into, into traversable pathways and expanding opportunities. Strengthen the individual. Start with yourself. Take care with yourself. Define who you are. Refine your personality. Mm. Choose your destination and articulate your being. As the great 19th century German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche so brilliantly noted, he whose life has a why can bear almost any how. Oh. JBP. Our guest today makes this quote, quote pale in comparison. That's a heavy quote. I don't know if I'm pale in anything, but anyway, great. <laughs> Our guest today has been a staple on the show for years at this point. Years, if you listen maybe. to the show, you know who they are. If you don't know who they are, get the hell out of here. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Come back. Give us a chance. <laughs> They've been motivating, inspiring, mm -hmm. the master of ceremonies, collaborating, podcast host, collaborating, mm -hmm. coaching, mentoring, mm -hmm. countless people that are that are open enough to listen. And uh, I'm I'm glad to have John Duffin back for the 13th round of this boxing match. Wow! Thank you for coming back, Shay Duran. I'm thrilled to be back. Like I said, for the lucky 13, man. Uh, it, it, it it's 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 a privilege, and you always make it fun. And, and so I'm just glad to be here, man. Thrilled. Don't underestimate the power of vision and direction. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Well, what resonates that at least today, this conversation, what's resonating with me about that quote is the fact that coaches need to be coached. It, it It's people feel as if they that it's a sign of weakness, hmm. including me at times to to accept direction and, and, and accept vision and. It's funny because very often I, I have seen it in myself as a sign of weakness. And lately, recently, I'm realizing how generous it is when people like offer it, just even offer that sort of tweak or direction. And that's where I go back to, to the statement, which is coaches need coaches too, that I really believe in my heart that sometimes you got so much stuff going on in front of you that it's very difficult to see the other side of the road. And so when someone is offering direction, vision, or when you have a great day of clarity, it's really important to realize where you are. That's what it's meaning to me today. Take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Easy to not. As I've learned, it's easy to not. Um, a lot of circumstantial stuff can throw itself at you. And I'm just speaking for me. And you know what I mean? And it's like a lot of circumstantial stuff can come running. And then direction vision uh is like what well, whatever. You know, I, I I just gotta I just have to stay afloat. And it's a tough it it's a difficult way to navigate. So I always respect and appreciate when someone's offering direction and vision. Don't have to choose it at that immediate moment, but most often it helps. Mm -hmm. You know, it helps me make a clearer decision when people, when others get to see things, because ultimately I'll see it. But if you could see it sooner, why not? You know, um, it hurts. It can, it can, and and that's the fun. Not the fun. It's an odd choice of words. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't necessarily call it fun, but the odd realization of how like your mindset can 
shift away from the vision, the direction, and how it can snap back in under certain circumstances, talking to certain people. Look, literally being with you today, this sounds like such a suck up thing to say, but I'll risk it, which is just being with you today, that it, it, it's a reminder, like those senses of clarity, right? That it it helps. Uh, I've become a bigger and bigger and bigger advocate now for collaboration. I'm, any and every chance that you get uh, to incorporate teamwork, help, take it, take it. And I really believe it helps with the vision part. What's the opposite of collaboration? Oh, going it alone, isolation, uh, isolation, going right. And it just literally isolation, going it alone. You don't understand. You don't see it. You don't get it. I'm the only one. Those sorts of things. It's it's a tremendous, and I'm using that word very sarcastically. It's a tremendous ego jolt when you are now saying they don't get it. They're a problem. You don't understand. I'm the only one that's going through this. And so that's that is the tough position to really be in when you really are alone and you're waving off collaborators, you know, for whatever reason. What relationship does shame have? Wait a minute, ask me that again. That's what I'm sure I got it. Does shame have a relationship with isolation? Sure. Sure. Because part of like, I'll speak for me. I'm, I'm, I'll just, like, it's easier if I just answer it that way. Uh, well, you're speaking for us. Cause I asked the question. So well, you okay. Well, then... <laughs> even if I wasn't aware, why am I asking you? Well then, happy to answer it. You know the these damn hosts of the world. <laughs> so or these right. damn social media comments. And it's oh my god! Oh right, right, block, block. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm laughing. Here's what it, it it ain't funny when it occurs. If I'm isolating, it takes me no time personally to go to. I'm all alone, and there's a reason for that. <laughs> You know, and, and and so what was what's the reason? And you, if you're me, you could head in two different directions. Number one, because other people don't understand and they don't appreciate me. And again, it, this is the problem when you're isolating, which is others don't understand, and and in your mind you're picking these goofy fights that don't exist. Why wasn't I here? Why wasn't I? you start this this horrible cycle? And then you go to the shame part, as you asked, which is then it's like, oh, well, because I don't deserve it. Oh, because, you know, they're better, cooler, further advanced. Their businesses are further advanced. They're speaking on larger stages. They're speaking more frequently, whatever. And then it's like, and that's because, and then you finish the sentence and you finish it typically wrong. You know, and that's where the shame can come in. And I've learned the easiest way to get out of that mindset is simply be around somebody, you know, say yeah, way more often than you're saying no, that that absolutely has helped me. Um, it's it's you get an opportunity to meet somebody, you get an opportunity to show up, it's like, just go. There are very few things like, um, you know, unless you got something really specific uh, that's going on. And if you do reschedule something. But don't just brush it off. Why not? Well, you never know if you're going to get that next opportunity. See, the easiest way, I think, to isolate and be alone and lose out on opportunities is to put yourself there. You know? It's like, that, that's a conscious decision. So for me, one of the reasons I've collaborated a ton lately is... Certainly not to impress anybody. It it it's more to impress me <laughs> that it, it that it becomes. I love that energy. I love whether it's Zoom or in person coffees, lunches. Jay, you personally put me in front of about a half dozen people recently, really recently, and I felt a responsibility to me and a responsibility to you 
that I was going to be 100% certain I would meet every single person at an event. I was going to meet them. Uh, and so whether it was driving to Malvern, showing up or whatever, you know, um, some of the meetings were literally a block from my house and some of them were, you know, a hall. But it mattered to me because that's a privilege. Like from a business sense, the energy that you could feed in a collaboration will center me. I, I know for myself, like I said, I've I've done a couple of recently social live collaborations and they've been and i don't mean it to sound vain they were fantastic and they're fantastic because the vision the direction the stuff that you talk about in the quote becomes so much clearer to me you know that it's like people unless unless the collaborator is a distraction and you know if they are unless it's that you don't have to just sit and take that. Hmm. But so often, God, it's the weirdest quote, and it, it'll sound, it'll sound, it's God lover, my Aunt Diane, uh, my dad's sister. So oh. I just remember when I was being real picky around a food buffet when I was a kid, and just look at me, you'd see that I certainly resolved that problem. Oh. Um, <laughs> but what I would say is, I remember she saying, you know, just just try everything she goes you, what you're going to realize you're going to like most of it and she was right about the food part and she and, and in my mind that's the collaboration part you want your vision to get sharper clearer you want that sense of direction to feel more true and right whether you're a coach whether you're a business leader bring somebody just to help you tweak it you know like it, it's they can help they can help and if it's just even the sense of confirming what you know that helps too do you see it that way and I'm were, like, were you scared it. were you scared sure I, I always am uh i it, it's it's the craziest thing as much as i enjoy meeting new entrepreneurs successful business leaders First time collaboration with somebody like people that I admire when I'm in front of them, I often will go to the in my mind, the 30 minutes before I shouldn't be here. They're more elevated than me. This is really you know, I still go through that. I get out of it. But it doesn't mean it doesn't creep in for a minute. Or How do seven. you get out? Yeah. Uh, so it's actually a technique that I use in terms of coaching and I use it myself and it takes all of about 16 seconds, which is I incorporate a breathing technique and I mean it, it's a 16 second breathing technique, Navy SEALs breathing technique. And then I've worked with a psychologist and I've taken his findings, Joseph Dowling, uh, from the university of Pennsylvania and Rutgers university. And I've taken his findings and I do the Navy SEALs breathing technique. 16 seconds and i incorporate it with what was taught to me to be a body of evidence hack and that hack is you've met somebody cool in your life you've done something cool in your life you don't have to worry is it a good enough situation it just has to matter to you right and the wow. extreme example i use is i remember run about to cross the finish line of running a marathon in berlin germany and that was less than 10 years ago. And so it was like, okay, never would have thought at my age, at my fitness level, at my, you know, whatever, that I would be crossing a finish line, completing a marathon in another country. But I did. And so that's an extreme example. And I coach people all the time to say, well, you, this is not a competition thing. And trust me, if you actually saw me do it, you'd be really unimpressed. But I just. They call that running? Yeah, no, they, they don't even call it walking. Um, <laughs> floundering would have been a better choice of words. But whatever. All I'm saying is you don't work. <laughs> I had to do it. Oh, you had to. I got so many. And this is, again, in, in another country. I don't want to use the word foreign country. That just sounds so vain. Um, but in another country, right, that literally all the pats on the head and good for yous and all that stuff, that just tells you. That just tells you. But I really think they were just happy to get the road back. 
that they could literally open the road to drivers again. But what I really believe is in your mind, you've done something cool. You've done something cool. It doesn't have to be a competition thing. It just has to matter to you. And it centers me. So I think about that. I remember the feeling of crossing the finish line. I remember getting all weird and teary and all that stuff. Um, and I remember that. And so I think about it, and then all of a sudden, it's like, okay, I deserve a seat at the table at the very least. Um, and folks, if you want to get more linear and it's business, think about something cool that you've done in business, a meeting that you felt great about, uh, you mm -hmm. know, a client that you secured that you were like, I never thought I was going to get them. Just that. Because if you've done it once, you could do it more than once. And chances are you've done it once. So it's just that sense of that hack. Breathe a little bit with intentionality. And the intentionality is think about something that you've done that you felt impressed by. And don't worry if other people were impressed by it. You know, don't worry if somebody says, do they call that running? Um, <laughs> well, I'm just right now. And then when you do, you can then have a conversation. And the last hack with that is you come from a place of curiosity. You're not trying to impress anybody in these meetings. You're just not. Um, and when you do, people feel that and smell that. So if you're coming in to a new conversation from a place of curiosity, people tend to respond. If I'm coming into a meeting needing to strong arm the conversation and let you know what a you know an incredible human being I am, or or I need to impress you, you won't. You won't. Uh, you come in from a place of curiosity and then you leave the meeting and and it feels great. And that's what I would suggest those those big three, you know. How do you stay motivated? Here's what I know. And I know I don't know a lot, but here's what I know. How do I do it? I have to sometimes propel myself into a situation. And once I'm in the situation, it typically always works. And that's the thing I know. When I'm in it, hmm. it's going to work. It may not work in the sense that I got to close this deal and I've got to find you and I got to move you to this income. It's not that. It's you know you're in the right place. You know you got worth. And that sense of satisfaction I'll use the table without mentioning any names, right? They're great people, and I have no aversion to that. But I'll mention that table, right? So I was one of 11 people at that table. Uh, I have met nine of the – well, no, I'm one. I'm sorry. I've met eight of the 11 people. My math is typically better than that. I've I met eight of the 11 people <laughs> that were seated, and I've met plenty of me. So I feel good about that meeting. <laughs> Too good. But what I would say is um, – It's deep. Of, it's deep. Well, right. But of the nine people since that time – there was not a single thing that I felt wrong with in any one of those conversations. And I technically knew only a couple of them. These were all first encounters. And so what does that do as coach, business leader, whatever? It gives you the confidence to know you can have a conversation. I have a quote. What's that? If you fulfill your obligations every day, mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about the future. Mm. Mm. I that feels pretty true to me. Same author as that first quote. That was a Peterson. You know, in the spirit of Philly, I was at that. Oh my god! And at the event, event right? And uh, I love That's the it. quote. What do you think? If you Tell fulfill me the... your obligations every day, you don't need to worry about the future. Oh my god! It's brilliant. Um, uh, how was the event? Well, if we follow the common culture yeah it was a top-down representation of patriarchy Ooh, okay i'm just i'm just teasing Tell me what you mean <laughs> it was profound it was meaningful it was depth there right. was depth it was okay cool it spoke it seemed as though it really spoke to the audience mm -hmm. it, was, it was a call to conscience i love it and less than five percent of it was similar to what he had talked about two days before that i was in pittsburgh so it was a testament to his ability to have things in his brain come out of his mouth. I think that's such a gift. Completely so, different conversation than 
Jay, you speak, you're one of these people. And I think one of the things that makes you different, and I try and I aspire to it, I aspire to that, is you're doing a disservice if you're giving your canned speech. It, like when you do a tour and you're going, you know, and you said top down, when you're going, if you're not reading the audience, if and, and by audience, clients, oh, coaches, man. whoever, if you're mm -hmm. not reading the room, and you're just giving stock canned answers. Um, you're not doing exactly the service that you say you are. I watched him. We're mm -hmm. talking about Dr. Jordan B. Peterson for anyone that's listening to this. I watched mm -hmm. him ask in two different cities in the VIP mm -hmm. in two different contexts. Multiple people. Mm -hmm. How did I do? Mm -hmm. What feedback do you have? He asked me because he's like, wait. You look like I know you. And I said, well, yeah, I saw you Tuesday. Mm -hmm. He's like, how did I do tonight? Versus that. How about that? So the, the that that was mm -hmm. exemplary. Of, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, like Imagine, imagine somebody who is filling theaters right now. And I saw enough social media posts from Philadelphia of multiple, multiple people. So I could see that roughly a 3,500 seat theater was filled. And so to think that they are going to ask, how did I do? Which is, you know, it, it, it's to me, the ultimate sign of bravery is if somebody is going to, if, when you put yourself at risk of having your like vision questioned. I would said to him, remarkable. Right. I'm very grateful for that, but I also said, "Yeah, and you and your." I said this was my opinion. I said, "You're mm -hmm. molting." How so? That last sentence and molting means shedding, evolving. Mm -hmm. Things are dying off, right? Because the last sentence, <laughs> Thursday night, mm -hmm. from 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 him was something to the effect of. You and he's talking to the all, all of us. Mm -hmm. You will spend the rest of your life answering these questions, and mm. these questions were, you know, the tour is we who struggle mm -hmm. with God, the big questions like right around what is real and mm -hmm. do I believe in God and all these these big questions. Mm -hmm. And he was emotional. He cried mm. and uh, was crying like it, it. It was a different Tuesday night. I was crying for two hours. Thursday night, he's crying at the he's end. He's crying. Yeah, he takes the time. And up. so, it, and it was a for me, my interpretation of both yeah. event nights. Thursday night was mm -hmm. um, headier. Mm -hmm. It was a, it was like I said, completely different experience, different mm -hmm. stories, different navigation to get to us an outcome. But um, but yeah, he he got real choked up, and mm -hmm. and so my feedback to him was remarkable and i recall saying and i believe you're molting and i said i'm with you so, mm. I'm with you mm -hmm. and anyway it was just mm -hmm. so t the reason i bring all that up is because yeah. when you just said about how 3500 people yeah and someone even had the courage to ask that question not only did i answer it mm -hmm. but i also i didn't just say you're great i said hey i observe mm -hmm. that you're molting mm -hmm. How did so he it's interesting. He opened that up. Sorry, I didn't it, mean to talk over you. How did he respond when you made that observation? He listened. That's all you can ask. That's all you can ask. So he absorbed it. That's, you know. It was, there well, it was, it was, yeah, there was, uh. He was listening. He was thinking. So I'm sure in my mind, I would be really. He didn't say, get the fuck out of this. Right. Thing. Or yeah. some cheerleader. -y. Thanks, man. That's awesome. Or no, 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 he, no. It was just listen. It was, it was very. Processed it. Uh, it was interesting. So the yeah. mark to me of a great business leader is that. Interesting. So you talk about vision. Would you be kind enough? Do you still have the original quote? Oh, I sure do. Would you reread it for me one more time? 
the first one. Don't underestimate the power of vision and direction. Mm. These are irresistible forces able to transform what might appear to be unconquerable obstacles into traversable pathways and expanding opportunities. Strengthen the individual. Start with yourself. Mm. Take care of yourself. Define who you are. Refine your personality. Choose your destiny and articulate your being. As the great 19th century philosopher, German philosopher, mm -hmm. Friedrich Nietzsche so brilliantly noted, he whose life has a why can bear almost any how. Mm. I thank you, first off, for repeating it. Secondly, it's so you're standing in front of a thought leader, an, a renowned 2024 thought leader that's, that's gener you know what I mean, that's filling a theaters. And he asks you, how did I do? And, and the beginning of that quote, don't underestimate the power of vision and direction. You know, start with yourself. So I believe the mark of a great leader, a great leader, is somebody who is able to absorb, is able to pivot, is able to, you know, give me your word. I'm so sorry. I don't know it. You taught me. Morph, morph, say the word for me. Oh, the molt. Shout out to Jimmy Jimmy Delay for get telling me about molting. M O L T M O L T I N G. Molting. Yeah. Right. Molt, so, molting. So imagine that you would as the thought leader from the person that not only paid to see you once, they paid at least twice because you're now looking familiar to the dude. And it's like and he's asking and you make that feedback and he doesn't call security, brush you off. Tell you, no, 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 no. See, what I was doing was, but, but how many leaders have you heard in your lifetime, folks, that dismiss that sort of thing? They, oh, no, no. See, what I intended was, but, but, and and go into that defense mode. Yeah, the definition, shed old feathers, hair, skin, or an old shell to make way for a new growth. Mm -hmm. The snake molts its skin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So to me, that's the mark of what I'm trying, like with the collaborate, why that stuff has mattered to me is that, and by the way, when you're not on your AS of A games or AS of A days, right? Um, that's hard to see that. And, and sometimes the best part of a collaborative conversation, like a podcast that we're having or meeting people or whatever, to me is that sense of just someone helping you see something i'm molting i hope so because i hope so i was i have through his work and others and those that have influenced him he's right. been a great influence to the show mm -hmm. to my to my life to our yeah. company's um mm -hmm. methodologies and so on it's as if through the activity of acting out his and others lessons mm -hmm. I interacted with a hero beyond the phenomenon of mm -hmm. just plain adoration. And because mm -hmm. you know, when it, you know, when we're a fan of something or someone, it's as if our psyche takes shape of it or the thing, and we lose ourselves essentially in the crowd. Swifty, um, you're a Swifty. There you go, Taylor. Right, and, right. No, so you understand what I'm saying, right? Like, there's I absolutely a lot, there's, do. If ten people are in the class and they're still, they've yet to take the test or mm -hmm. live it outside of the classroom. Right. There's an adoration for the the broker, which is mm -hmm. the the broker of knowledge, just the professor in this case. Mm -hmm. They've yet to become a person. Uh, they've yet to become a a post grad. Yeah. They're still a student of of the anyway. So it was had I not molted, <laughs> I may maybe I wouldn't have said the truth. Exactly. Maybe I would exactly. have just said some of it, like mm -hmm. remarkable. You're amazing. Remarkable. Just incredible. Uh, and I said, you're molting. You're molting based on the last sentence. Right. 
And and I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. Jay, I would That's say, how I felt. say to anyone, folk, I say it to anyone. You really want to make yourself a present tense success story, a present tense value. It's it it ain't it it's it requires a little bit of bravery. It requires some risk. But when I do, when anybody does, it's the most refreshing thing I can hear. And it, it's they're the people I they're the people I lean towards. And I'm reminded in terms of, of of the vision, the way that I coach. I never want to be. I've said it out loud. I never ever want to be a leader that's telling a bunch of old war stories. Never. And it's not just the technology being right with. It's the emotional part of it too. And the easiest way to stay current and relevant is allowing yourself to, I still can't remember the word. Um, Mort? <laughs> Mort. Oh, oh molt. no, molt. Yeah, molt. 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 I keep molt. wanting to say mulch. Um, <laughs> Shout out to Jimmy DeLay, who's been on the Coach Matters podcast. I'm, I'm now a massive he, fan of him. He was a student of the 30 Days of Thought, and he said, Jay, right. I'm molting. And I was yeah. like, what the heck is that word? I'm that all in now with the molting part. But right, it's it, it's that's how you demonstrate. And it's like, so I now have a stronger degree of respect for Jordan, simply in the sense that he absorbed the information. That's all somebody needs to do. And when you are a business leader, it's somebody makes a suggestion. It doesn't mean you have to go do it. It just means listen. Thought leaders can listen. Business leaders should listen. Yeah, I, I don't want it to come across. Uh, none of this has to do with whether my observation is accurate or not. No, no, you're just at least taking this, in information. This person did, They at least that was my interpretation. Right. They were present. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, they asked me what I thought. Yeah, it's, oh, beautiful. I didn't, I didn't come in, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've seen, I've seen Jordan speak three times now. I've met him right. three times. And ideally, when this by the time this comes out, it'll be f uh, five or six times. I'm right. going with two more of these things. Nice, at least to my knowledge. They asked me a question. This person of le is this in a position of authority, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because they they did say who gets to be there, who doesn't. Mm -hmm. Influence. Mm -hmm. We're all being influenced by them. Sure. And power, mm -hmm. because of the the value that they've given. They asked me mm -hmm. what Probably I thought. Do. I shared what i thought mm -hmm. uh, be beyond proclamate what proclaiming or or re reaffirming ideology right right uh, you know pat my perception mm -hmm. i tried to say is what i could in the in the short period of time i mean they like they create they wanted to know and then the whole thing there is like hey don't spend a lot of time talking to george because they say that before because if everybody, one of us here, talks to Jordan, we'll never get out of here. We got to take thirty five hundred people. Well, it's a hundred people in the VIP. Okay, great. That's a whole no, other conversation. No, for figure at five minutes. Say five minutes, a hundred people. You, know, you only get a picture. You're not supposed to talk to Jordan because no one has time for that shit. No, no, and and someone's gonna bogart it and then get into some heavy personal thing. So, so and, with that in mind, I wasn't gonna go and give a, an essay on this, but no. I did say. Mm -hmm. And I've I've watched him ask other people for mm -hmm. like he'll ask people, how are you? How are you doing? Mm -hmm. I, I noticed if the, he thinks that they're like really fucked up, mm -hmm. he'll really ask. He's worried. Mm -hmm. He knows he, this, he's a truly a, a healer at a profession. So here's what I especially love. No knowing, knowing what you just said, he genuinely cares. He's a healer. Here's what I would say, which I think in terms of how I would interpret that is there's a way that he asked that question of you, which is how did I do, which is to me significantly different than what did you think? And I was thinking that I'm like, right. It, it's like, oh my God. It, it's such a much more vulnerable, like engaging sort of a question. How did Ooh, I do? Good. Rather than, well, what did you think? Sounds almost like a judgy sort of, you know, and, and putting you on the defensive. So to be that open and vulnerable, uh, 
what did you know what how wow I, that's a great point you're making thank you um what how did i do so you're absolutely by the question encouraging a response let me get this straight i need to make sure yeah. i understand your sure. um your observation here of right. the language what did what did you think mm -hmm. implicitly puts it on the other mm -hmm. it's like it's whatever is about to come out of your mouth has to do with you 100 percent. but how did i do mm -hmm. i'm encouraging up uh-huh and allowing you to wow, speak that's interesting. freely think about the old i i i I'm bringing up Navy SEALs and now I'm going to bring up another old reference. I have no military background, so I don't know why I would, but I mean, it's like permission to speak freely is a way different, is a business leader is way different than what you think. And, you know, and so I believe wow. as real leaders, you can do that. We, I, to speak for me, came from a culture that you didn't do that because it was a sign of weakness because the leader the boss was so to speak and i can't even say the word without laughing anymore you know what i mean um of how archaic it sounds but the boss was supposed to know all the answers so when you have someone that is i mean look the proof with the jordan peterson um is people are paying so it's not like he opened up his home and encouraged people to show up yes. for spending money. So it puts him in that position where he could be perceived as leader, boss, whatever. And I just say that it's a great thing to take away from a culture perspective. Don't make it weaker. Don't mean you have to, you don't have to take the suggestion, but just listen for God's sake, and you might learn something which would in turn make you even stronger. And that's what I'm learning for myself, you know, is I, I get to learn more. And when I get to learn more, I'm more current, present, and I can help more people. I, I'm excited. I'm glad we ended up on this. I don't Me too. know how we did. Mm -hmm. I love it. It was, it was interesting. Yeah. And see, this is where it's like the, the, the mark of a, you ask great questions and you seek information. And I, and I just repeat, the, the mark of a strong leader, coach, uh, is someone who encourages other people to contribute. And as I said, it doesn't mean you have to do what they say. It simply means get, why wouldn't you want all the information? Why wouldn't you want it? You know what I mean? What, like I said, I want to make, for me, I want to make the best decisions possible for any organization I'm working with. I want to make the best decisions with the information that I have. And I want that information to be as complete and total as possible. And I believe heading in the directions you talked about with with a an acclaimed speaker that people travel to see. You know, well, I've seen him four times, might see him five or six. Well, that ain't nothing. <laughs> that ain't nothing um and as i said and none of it was canned as you demonstrated earlier and that to me but the word you used on the second time was still remarkable i, I i'm trying to recall if i said mm -hmm. unbelievable mm -hmm. or remarkable mm -hmm. so i like them both if somebody is saying, I'm not sure what I want to call you, unbelievable or remarkable, I'll accept either happily. And um, <laughs> yeah, I felt as though it was unbelievable <laughs> and or remarkable because on Tuesday, hmm. the, the audience is crying. And on Thursday, no, no, I, I'm not speaking for the audience. I'm saying I was. It, oh, OK. Got it. It Never was. Mind. OK. The. How, first of all, this, this man also looks at people when he's teaching. So when you're sitting in the front row, he was look. he kept looking at me. Uh, that's how I felt. He kept looking at me and, telling he was. Me and calling me out on my shit gotcha. without trying to be a jerk or anything. Just like totally oh right about everything. 
winning, just mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. and the stories and the passion and the mm -hmm. the genius was right there singing the song, mm -hmm. painting the painting, and for two hours I'm crying, mm -hmm. feeling accomplished, yep. proud, mm -hmm. as well as embarrassed and ashamed like and guilty. Shame part you brought up earlier with me. He just, he just, he just artfully destroyed mm -hmm. me. I burnt, burnt to a crisp. <laughs> then I get to see him. And so now that's Tuesday. Thursday rolls around. Right. Sitting on the right side, still in the front, but right. still being looked at. Mm -hmm. it, but it was, it felt, my interpretation, a headier experience. Mm -hmm less it was it was it was different stories different route mm -hmm. it was a it, five like i said five percent of what the other one had been i'm not crying mm -hmm. not emotional i am inspired mm -hmm. i am you know let's say experiencing value mm -hmm. thinking this is a different conversation. Mm -hmm. We still get to the same destination mm -hmm. with content. Um, you know, there, there's a clear underlying premise or, or postulates that are being. Yeah, you know? sure. And, and so then it's like that in itself is a gift mm -hmm. because this is a real teacher. Mm-hmm. So I think it was unbelievable. <laughs> I think yeah. you're right. I was unbelieving uh, that that would be the case. Okay. And obviously, are you still? And then, uh, at, and then, when they got emo they themselves got emotional at the mm -hmm. end, whereas mm -hmm. where they had not at that degree or within that context mm -hmm. last time. Right. My belief was you're molting, mm -hmm. and I'm with you. Mm -hmm. So. What could be a higher compliment than that when you think about it? I don't know. So we go back to the collab part. There's not a higher compliment than I see it, I get it, and I'm with you, right? That we can change. Similar to what you said better. to me before we hit record. Right, really. that we can see, and, and I'll leave it with this, which is at the risk of sounding self-serving, but I'll take the risk, which is if you were really being authentic, the real true mark of authenticity to me is you shouldn't be the same in every conversation. If you're oh, really I agree. being authentic, the cry part should not be a calculated at the 50 minute part of a, now here's my cry story. How many speakers have you heard? You know, that's coming. You know it's coming. You feel you feel the buildup. I was alone and I was sleeping in my bathtub. Not to name names, uh, but I was going to say, and you know it's coming and you know where it's coming. So, and then people just start crying. <laughs> like on cue. So to me, the mark of a really, really authentic speaker is sometimes you're crying, sometimes you're not. Sometimes you're, you know, intuitive. Sometimes it's external but it's always true. It's always true. My name is Matt Foley. <laughs> and I live in a van, a van down by, down the, by the river. <laughs> and we will see you all the next time of the Culture Matters podcast. You better leave us a review or don't come back. Right. Right. <laughs>